Hi parents, this is Benjamin Lowe here. I'm the author of Master Math Models and over the years, I've worked with more than 3,000 children from different schools all across Singapore. If your child has just received their PSLE results and you're now trying to decide which secondary schools to put down on the option form, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to make a, a wise, well-balanced decision based on your child's PSLE score their personality and your family's situation so that you won't regret your choices later on. If you find this helpful, please hit subscribe and share this with any parent who is also choosing schools this year. Okay, firstly, why this decision matters. Choosing a secondary school is not just about the next one year. It affects the next four to six years of your child's life. It affects the friends they make, the teachers who guide them, and also the CCAs that they are exposed to and even the post-secondary options that they will be available to them. Some schools have a strong culture in certain areas, for example, certain CCAs, certain academic programs, or certain school identity and history. When your child wears that uniform every day, they are not just going to school, they are absorbing the culture and expectations of that place. So this is an important decision. But it doesn't have to be a stressful one if you understand how the system works and what to look out for. Next. The 2025 system in simple terms. Let me very quickly summarize how things work in 2025. We are under full subject-based banding, so instead of the old express, normal, acad, and normal technical, students are posted into three posting groups, posting groups 3, 2, and 1. The idea is similar. PG3 is roughly like the old express, PG2 is the normal acad, PG1 the normal and technical. But the subjects are now offered at different levels, and students can mix and match based on their strengths. Each school will have a cutoff point or COP, for the different posting groups. And sometimes for the integrated program or the IP, the COP is simply the PSLE score of the last student who got into that school for that particular pathway in the last posting exercise, meaning last year. The lower the COP, the more competitive the school is for that pathway. Next, the four big factors to consider. Next, the four big factors to consider. Now, I want to give you a very clear framework. Whenever parents ask, which school should my child go to? I always bring them back to the four big factors. They are number one, the cutoff points and posting group. Number two, distance and daily travel. Number three, CCA and school culture. And number four, being realistic about your child. So let's break this down. First one, the cutoff points or the posting groups. Okay, for this one, when you look at the MOE website or the school finder, you will see that for each school, the PSLE score range of the COP or the cutoff point for the posting group three and also for two and one if it is offered by the school. Some SAP schools will also show requirements involving higher Chinese, for example, needing a merit or distinction for entry. So what do you need to ask? What you want to ask is, is this school's cutoff point within a reasonable range of my child's score? Not so ambitious that it's almost impossible, but also not so low that your child may be understretched for four to five years. We are not going to talk about specific AL numbers today. For that, we have another video links in the description. Instead, I want you to remember the idea that every school on your list should be either a slight stretch, a good match, or a safe but acceptable option. We'll combine this idea with the other three factors next. Factor number two, distance and daily life. This is the one that many people underestimate. In secondary school, reporting times are usually a bit earlier, and the schools are generally stricter, stricter about punctuality than primary school. Repeated late coming can lead to detentions, demerit points, and a lot of unnecessary stress. Think about your child's daily routine. What time will they have to wake up to reach school calmly and on time? If there is traffic, MRT delay, or rain, do they still have enough buffer time not to be late? On days with CCA remedial or project work, what time will they realistically reach home? You see, if the journey is long, for example, close to an hour or more each way, your child may have to be up before the sun even rises and still need to revise when they get home late. The question is, can they sustain that every day for years? Sometimes a school that is slightly less famous but significantly nearer can be a better choice. Third factor, CCA and school culture. CCA is where a lot of character building happens. Your child learns things like teamwork, leadership and how to handle setbacks and also how to relate to different people. It also shows up in their portfolio and can influence their post-secondary choices. So when you look at the school, don't just ask what is their PSLE cutoff. Ask, what kind of environment is this? What are the strong CCAs? 
Is it a very sports driven school or a very performing arts driven school or more academic enrichment focus? And does that align with your child's interests and personality? One more thing. If a school is famous for a particular CCA, the competition to get into that CCA can be very intense. So if your child's main reason for choosing the school is that one CCA, but they don't get in, they might feel very disappointed. So always consider both what the school offers and how realistic it is for your child to get into and thrive in that environment. Next factor, being realistic about your child. So the fourth factor, and maybe the most important one, is being realistic about your child. We love our children, and of course, we want them to go to the best possible school. But best is not always the one with the lowest COP. Best is the school where your child can be supported, be motivated, and be given enough opportunity to succeed. Ask yourself honestly, how well does my child cope with stress? Are they self-motivated? Or do they need more structure and encouragement? Do they already have heavy commitments outside of school? In some very competitive schools, the strongest teachers and resources may be focused on the top classes. This is because the school also has to hit certain performance targets. So if your child only just scripts in, they may end up in a class that doesn't receive the same level of support and surrounded by peers who are also struggling to keep up. Sometimes, a slightly less competitive school where your child is in the top few classes gets more encouragement and has a better chance to take on leadership roles. And that can be a much more powerful reason. So next, how to think about your six choices. Now let's put everything together and talk about how to use the six choices wisely without going into specific AL examples. Think of your six choices as a portfolio, not six lottery tickets. You want a mix of a few schools that are a reasonable stretch, several that are a good match, and at least one or two that are clearly safe, but still schools that you can accept. So what is a reasonable stretch? A reasonable stretch will be uh, an AL score that is one or two below your child's AL score. Those that are a good match in terms of AL will be those that are exactly where your child's AL is. And at least one or two that are clearly quite safe. You can even go four, five, six points below uh, for the last choice or the last two choices. Okay, Because those are schools that you want to be a safety net. So a good way to think about it is this. Some schools on your list should be slightly more competitive than your child's profile. Some schools should be roughly on par and some should be a little bit less competitive to act, as, to act as a safety net. So what you want to avoid is this. Number one, all six schools being extremely ambitious or all six schools being so safe that your child is under challenge. Spread them out in a thoughtful way. So what are the common mistakes with the six choices? Let me highlight a few very common mistakes that I see every year. The first mistake is that many put mainly dream schools that are clearly out of reach with almost no realistic backup. Parents think, never mind, let's just try, right? Maybe we'll get lucky, but if all six schools are very far from what your child qualifies for, you increase dramatically the chance of ending up in a default school that you did not even list. Mistake number two, unintentionally wasting choices. This happens when choices three and four are actually more competitive than choices one and two. So if your child cannot qualify for choice one and two, they are almost certainly not going to qualify for a harder school in choice three and four. So that will become wasted. These slots will become decorations on the form. Mistake number three, ignoring distance and CCA completely and choosing purely based on name and cutoff. You might end up with a very long daily travel, a CCA your child did not want, and a level of academic pressure that is not a good match for your child. So now we come to the next part. Here I will talk about the practical steps for parents and what you can do practically after watching this video. So here's a simple step-by-step -step approach and here we go. Step one, write down your child's PSLE score and which posting groups they qualify for. You should already know that. Step two, use MOE School Finder and any COP tables you have to shortlist a group of schools that are slightly above, slightly at, and slightly below your child's COP score. Step three, from that shortlist, filter by distance. Circle the schools that are within a reasonable travel time for your family. Step four, look at the CCA and programs. For each school that you are serious about, ask, does this school offer programs that fit my child's interests? Are there CCAs 
that my child is likely to enjoy and get into and commit. Step five, discuss with your child. Are they ready for a very competitive environment? Or would they prefer a place where they can build confidence at a steadier pace? So after this, step six, arrange your six choices so that you have a couple that are a stretch, several that are realistic, and one or two that are clearly very, very safe and acceptable to you, of course. I know after saying all this, that this whole process can feel very overwhelming. It's natural to worry. Am I giving my child the best chance? But remember, there is no single perfect school for every child. The right school is the one where your child can feel safe and supported, feel challenged at the right level so that they can perform and be recognized, and grow in both character and academics. If this video has helped you see the decision more clearly, please subscribe to the channel and share this with other parents who are going through the same journey. If you'd like me to talk about specific score examples and how to arrange the six choices for different profiles, look out for my other video where I walk through these scenarios step by step. You can also leave me a message by leaving a comment in this video, or you can reach out to me using my WhatsApp number, which is found in the description. And with all that, I will say all the best as you choose a secondary school for your child in 2025. I'm Ben, and I'll see you in my next video.